progressing on to A-levels, you don't listen to them. Yes. People say constantly you don't listen. We've had it twice, once or twice here, but <coughs> in, the, in the trade it's generally mm. said. Do you listen? Well, uh, yes. Um, uh, there's a difference between agreeing with, uh, you know, I've listened to a range of views here. Um, I couldn't possibly agree with all of them um, because uh, they, they diverge. I put forward propositions. Um, then I listen to the debate. Sometimes I think the arguments in favour of what I'm doing um, are, are reassuring, like Anthony's, and they encourage me. Sometimes the arguments make me pause and think. And there was a recent occasion when I had some proposals about moving from different exam boards, which compete against each other, towards one exam board, which I thought would end um, uh, the sort of race to the bottom that had existed beforehand. But a number of people pointed out to me that, that this was a bridge too far. I and I listened, and I relented, board. and I decided that um, the weight of opinion actually was right, and I was wrong. <laughs> so sometimes, of course, like any politician who's trying to do the right thing, I'll put forward a proposition, I will see what the reaction is, I will weigh the argument and the evidence, and if it seems to me that I've erred, then of course I'll relent. Your problem, your problem is always, though, you measure everything against you know, people going off to university. So if you're good enough to get to a Russell Group, then you have, you have succeeded. If you have not got good enough, if, you're only, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you do not want to go to a Russell Group university, if you don't actually want to go to university, if you want to, go, if you want to leave school at 18, if you want to have the skills that are necessary in order to be able to learn a trade and, and find another place in the world, in, in, the, in your scheme of things, you know, they have not done as well. I think that it is extraordinary the way in which the, the sort of curriculum that you want to put forward, and I think that it's right, the criticism that's made of you, which is that you're trying to push us back to the future. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, right. yada, it's, yada. I mean, well, the, the I thing is, say yada, yada. yada. Yeah, well, I will say yada, yada. I think it's a because, serious, because it's a serious right, criticism, and frankly, I'm no, not the not first serious, to make it. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, uh, I'm not the first to make it. You are not the first to make it, but it is and not a serious criticism. you listen to what people are saying. It is not, because, um, well, firstly, um, I think that more people should go to university. I think it's yes. a scandal that so few students from poor backgrounds and do, you do go to university. And if, you I, I think if you hadn't trebled I university think... fees, then a lot more students no, 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 from no, poor no. backgrounds would be prepared to go to university. Actually, think... actually, actually, the, 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 the changes to, uh, to fees haven't affected participation of, of people from poor backgrounds. What has is the failure in the past of uh, schools in the poorest areas to give people the chance. It's all very well for Emily, as a barrister, you know, with the, 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 the social confidence and the aplomb that comes from that, to say, you know, oh, it's fine, you should treat these things valuably. But, you know, when I was growing up in Aberdeen, I wanted to go to university. I wanted more people from my background to go to university. I wanted to give them that chance. So don't patronise people. Gove, do not Emily, patronize don't patronise people I who want them to go to university. More than that, Emily, <laughs> if you knew some of the changes that have been made in vocational education, the way in which we've improved funding post-16 for those who want to do apprenticeships, the changes that Alison Wolfe and Doug Richard have made in order to ensure that they're of higher quality, the establishment of university technical colleges in order to provide people from the age of 14 with an appropriate skill and trade. If you were prepared to engage with the detail, then I wouldn't say yada yada, but I did say yada yada because it was the standard political boilerplate fashioned by the Labour Whip's office, which you churned out here instead of actually engaging with what's wrong and what's right in education today. All right, let me... Right. Come on. Very, I mean, very, very, very good and very rousing, but completely inaccurate. Do not make accusations against me and your, your supposed idea of what my background is. I failed my 11 plus and went to a secondary modern. That's why I didn't know anything about grammar. And that's why I can compare my children's education with my education because of the improvements that have been made by both parties. But both parties improve education by listening to experts, by listening to children and by learning. All right. Um... Make the man at the back there, in the, in the back row, then we will have to move on. Thank you. Different. The question uh, originally was about stifling creativity. Yes. I've been a music teacher for 40 years nearly, just retired, and I think the thing that has stifled cre creativity more than anything else recently is the continual parade of exam after exam after exam. <laughs> and, and where, where does music stand now in the curriculum? Oh, where does music stand now? Well, I've retired now, so I'll leave it to the people younger than me. But um, I think, um, along with many other subjects, the introduction of GCSEs in the late 80s has been disastrous for music, as it has been for many other subjects, and I hope that will okay. be 